the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Welcome to our service this morning and those at home. And today is the last Sunday after Trinity, the glorious green Sundays after Trinity. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, also with you. We say together the colic for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do be seated. As we prepare to meet Christ in the gift of one another, in the gift of his word and in the gift of his bread, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. us pray. Almighty God, in whose service lies perfect freedom, teach us to obey you with loving hearts and steadfast wills, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. 
For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the lands of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labour together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path to which they sh in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm is 126. The refrain for the psalm is, The Lord has done great things for us. The Lord, the Lord has done great, great things, things for us. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. Then said they among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has indeed done great things for us, and therefore we rejoiced. The Lord has done great things for us. Restore again, again our fortunes, O Lord, as the riverbeds of the desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. The Lord has done great things for us. Please stand for the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he called out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, Get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the last Sunday after Trinity. For almost a year, we have been following Mark's Gospel, occasionally supplemented by sections of John's Gospel. The long, green Trinity season has focused our attention on what Jesus said and did, enabling us and challenging us to grow as Christians, Green for growth, we might say. And now we reach 
the last incident in Mark's Gospel before the Passion narrative. The healing of blind Bartimaeus, a beggar, one of the lowest of the low at Jericho, provides an important transition to Jesus' ministry in Jerusalem. It's an incident intended to open our eyes. Do we see who Jesus is and what he has come to do? Mark, Mark is asking us. He asks this as we approach the climax of his gospel. And it's quite clear that the disciples do not yet fully understand and see what Jesus is about. Previously to this incident, they've been arguing about positions of power in the kingdom. We heard that last week. This is the last incident before the Passion. Bartimaeus sees not a not-to-be-missed opportunity as Jesus passes by. Many around him in the crowds have come to see the wonder worker, the teacher, the wandering preacher. Bartimaeus, however, is a man more perceptive than them all. He can see his own need and he can see when an opportunity presents itself. With no sight, he can see what the crowds fail to see. Here among them is the King Messiah, the son of David. The crowd is blind to this fact, and many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But Bartimaeus knows the urgency of the situation. Jesus hears his cry and responds, call him here. And Bartimaeus, throwing off his cloak, an important possession, springs up and comes to Jesus. And Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? Well, perhaps the answer is obvious, but not to Jesus. Jesus does not offer healing without Bartimaeus pointing out his need. My teacher, he says, let me see again. There's no prescription note here without talking to the patient. Jesus the Saviour meets each need personally. Bartimaeus' sight is restored and then he follows Jesus in the way. He doesn't come just to get what he wanted and leave. He becomes a follower of Jesus. One of the signs of the King Messiah and the coming of God's kingdom would be the opening of the eyes of the blind, says Isaiah. On that day, Isaiah says, the eyes of the blind shall see. He goes on to say that those who are saved will see properly. And then he also says, sadly, there is a blindness of those who do not see God at all. It's about vision. Vision is about how we see the world and how we perceive our God. Without vision, people and nations perish, says the writer of Proverbs. Bartimaeus' shouted cry to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, evokes the story of David returning to claim his kingdom in Jerusalem, as we read in the second book of Samuel. Mark is shortly to move into his passion narrative with Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on the donkey. The confession also contains the first public, unrebuked, recognition of Jesus as the King Messiah. Paradoxically, Jesus, who earlier announced the imminence of God's kingdom at the beginning of his ministry, will reign in Jerusalem, but from a cross. 
after the healing, the saying of Jesus, go, your faith has made you well, and the action of blind Bartimaeus has symbolic force. He who asks fervently and simply for mercy is given his sight. Unlike the disciples' desire for power in the kingdom, which blinds them to the necessity of a suffering king messiah, the faith of the blind Bartimaeus leads to salvation. He follows on the way as a disciple. One of the great moments in all of our lives is when our eyes are suddenly opened and we see as if for the first time. If we really look around us, we see a world that's full of wonder and mystery. And we see a world that is God-filled and not empty. The early church theologian Origen says, May the Lord touch our eyes, as he did those of the blind. Then we shall see in the visible things those that are invisible. Let those words indeed be ours. Can we see what's happening around us, to our communities and the way we are shaping the future? On the news this morning, we're thinking about education and changes in the educational system for the development of more skills and technical ability. We see the need for changes in our economy. We see also the pandemic still flourishing around us and the scientists and the government trying to work out ways of dealing with it. And we can see perhaps an end eventually. We see around us disasters, natural disasters, some of them caused by climate change. We can think of the people in La Palma in the Canary Islands and the volcano. We look around the world and we can see that resources are being depleted. We need to think of ways of using them more effectively. And around the world too, we see violence and oppression. We see violence in our own country. We need to have a vision, to see an end to some of these things that are ruining our world. Yes, we need to have our eyes opened. And it's not easy. Are we really content to leave our present and our future in the hands of those who are blind to the many finer things of life? And if we allowed the blind to lead us, will we not both fall into the ditch? It's vital that we are ensure that we are led by people of vision. We look at our leaders and hope that we see vision. We can see where they are going. We can see what it's all about. It's no use for us having a quick fix or a laugh now if we are destroying our future. We pray today indeed that our leaders are people of vision. They can see the possibilities, what needs to be done. Indeed, may our own eyes be opened to the world around us, to God's work going on all the time. And though we can pray, Lord Jesus, let us see again and again. Amen. Stand and affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. High and holy God, robed in majesty, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray that you will bring justice, faith and salvation to all peoples. We pray today for our world, for peace throughout our world, for an end to violence and oppression, for different ways of resolving disputes, we pray for the work of the United Nations organization and its peacekeeping forces serving around the world. We pray for our own country, for our government. We pray for those who work in education. And we pray that our educational system may provide all with the skill and ability to learn and to learn throughout life for flexibility and for adaptability. We pray for the changes proposed by the government, for an increase in the learning of skills and technical ability. And so we pray for skills training, particularly in our further education colleges. We pray for our economy, struggling to come to terms with the damage that's been done by the pandemic, for the huge amounts of money that have been borrowed by the government. We pray for our leaders that they will find a way forward for the economy. We pray for those worried in our society about the cost of inflation, the rising fuel prices and the rising cost of food. We pray too for all those working to overcome the pandemic, for our scientists, for all our government advisors and for our politicians and government. We pray that the right decisions may be made. And we pray throughout the world for those parts of the world which are suffering from natural and man-made disasters. We pray for the people on La Palma suffering from the effects of the volcano. We pray for those suffering from flooding and we pray too for world leaders as they shortly meet to discuss climate change. We pray for all our decision makers and leaders that their eyes may be opened to the possibilities of the way to overcome some of the problems that face us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You chose us in Christ to be your people and to be the temple of your Holy Spirit. 
we pray that you will fill your church with vision and hope. And today we pray for all biblical scholars and theologians. We pray for ourselves as we study the scriptures. We pray that we may indeed read Mark and inwardly digest what they are saying to us. We pray for all preachers, for all teachers. We pray for those responsible for religious education in our schools. And we pray for good relationships with those of other faiths and none. We pray particularly today for the Church of England, for the General Synod, for the Archbishop's Council and the House of Bishops. We pray particularly for those dioceses and parishes struggling with their finances, for the deficits that some of them have. We pray for an, a vision, an opening of our eyes to see the way forward in the face of financial difficulties, for a more effective use of the church's resources Pray for our own parish, for Helen and for Lyndon. We pray for guidance for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit enables us to cry, Abba, Father, and it affirms that we are fellow heirs with Christ and pleads for us in our weakness. And so we pray for all who are in need or distressed. We pray for the unemployed, for those who are struggling with their finances, for those who cannot provide adequately for their families. We pray for those suffering from mental difficulties, for depression and anxiety. We give thanks for the work of those who work in the National Health Service, for our doctors and nurses and all those who work in our surgeries, for those in our care homes, and particularly we pray for our care homes struggling to find a sufficient number of workers. We pray for those commended to our prayers, for Robert, for Bill, for Dorothy, David, Roger, Bronwyn, Julie, Robert and Audrey Bailey. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. In the baptism and birth of Jesus, you have opened heaven to us, enabled us to share in your glory the joy of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from before the world was made. And so we pray for those who have died recently, and among them for Margaret Sidaway, we pray for her family and friends. We pray too for the work of our funeral directors and for those who work in our cemeteries and the crematoria. We pray for all who give comfort to the bereaved. May your whole church, living and departed, come to a joyful resurrection in your city of light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the blessing of the Virgin Mary, St. John the Baptist and all your saints, we commend all peoples throughout the world to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also you. with you. And now you can give each other a holy wave to show the peace. Peace be with you. <laughs> peace be with you. <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give thanks, thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending song of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, power of power and might, heaven and, and earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and, and power, power be yours, yours forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen.
As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Father of light, in whom is no change or shadow of turning, you give us every good gift and perfect gift and have brought us to birth by your word of truth. May we be a living sign of that kingdom where your whole creation will be made perfect in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I think Helen's got a few notices. Always, it wouldn't be our service without a few notices. Um, indeed, you will have had your weekly email yesterday with lots and lots of notices in our weekly news. There's all sorts of um, information we're communicating with you and all sorts of things starting to happen. Um, so do have a read of that, but just to flag up a few. Um, the first one about knitted socks. Uh, a call for all knitted socks to come in now. Uh, those of you who are our knitters and you know you've been knitting us tiny little Christmas knitted socks and if anyone wants to see a pattern or an example of them, they're on the table uh, just at the back 
uh, as you go out. Uh, but we're, we're helping Father Christmas, we're helping Santa Claus out this year. We've managed to book him for a couple of events which we're very excited about because we know how busy he is. But we've agreed to help him out by knitting a few little socks where a little gift can be given to some of the children who come. So um, if those who've been knitting socks uh, could get those to us, we'd be really grateful. And if you haven't thought of knitting a sock, the patterns are still at the back. Do, do pick one up and see if you fancy having a go. Uh, on that table, there's also the charity box. Again, you'll see the details in our, our weekly news email. Um, but we're asking you to nominate the charities that, that we will then vote on as a congregation. We are asking for those nominations for charities to be in next week. So do have a look at the information that we've sent out to you and do bring your nominations to put in that box by next weekend. Um, Remedy Oak Christmas dinner, which we're hoping very much will happen this year, as you know, is booked for the 12th of December. There's still a few places left for that. If you'd like to come, do let Phil know and she will add you to the list. If you don't know who Phil is, let me know and I will let Phil know. I don't mind playing middle person there. And then the menus for that are on that back table also. Do pick one up, tick in your choices. And if you just put them through the vicarage letterbox, I'm collecting uh, those responses uh, this year. Uh, next weekend, of course, is All Saints and All Souls. We're keeping both on the Sunday, as is our usual pattern. Uh, Sunday morning will be All Saints, and Sunday afternoon our All Souls Memorial Service. If you're wanting a name of someone you've loved and lost, and it could be many years ago or it could be recently, um, then do add that person's name to that uh, list. I will have it in the parish hall with me after this service. Um, so even if you're not staying for a cup of tea or coffee, uh, do pop into the parish hall if you want to add a name to that list and do come and join us for our services next weekend. Um, and finally, Lyndon hasn't run away again. He was at St. James in Pool on Placement last Sunday. He's there again uh, this Sunday uh, and then he's on his half-term leave. So if anything comes up this week that you need a member of clergy for, uh, do contact me in the first instance. I think that's the lot. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.